everyone and welcome to another video by BioTeach, this time focusing on two of the examined units on the BTEC Applied Science Extended Diploma. The two units are called Principles and Applications of Science 1 and 2 and they are Units 1 and 5 from the specification. The reason I wanted to create this video is to give you an overview of the units and what you should expect, as well as how the assessment works and the national grade boundaries, which I think are really important for you to understand how to get those grades. I also want to cover a few revision tips in this video, so hopefully that will help you prepare for the course as a whole. The first thing I wanted to do was create a side-by-side -side comparison of the two units. You should be aware that you will most likely do Unit 1 in Year 1 of the course and Unit 5 in Year 2 of the course. Unit 1 is worth 90 credits and Unit 5 is worth 120 credits. Now both of these units are split into Biology, Chemistry and Physics topics, so I want to talk about those one by one as well. Firstly, the biology section in Unit 1 covers cell structure and function, cell specialisation and tissue structure and function, whereas on Unit 5, you develop these ideas a bit more and you look at actual organ systems such as the cardiovascular system, the ventilation system in terms of the lungs and other breathing organs, and you also look at the urinary system, the structure of the kidney, as well as cell transport mechanisms, where you learn a little bit more about active transport and passive transport through the cell membrane. Secondly, you have the chemistry section. In unit one, it looks at the structure and bonding in applications and science. In this section, you look at the periodic table elements and learn about the electronic structure of atoms and bonding, as well as the mathematical aspects of things like balancing equations, relative atomic mass and percentage yields. You also learn about the periodic table in terms of group arrangement and the SPD notation or the block arrangement and what that means for the elements properties. In unit five, on the other hand, you learn a bit more about the properties and the uses of substances. So things like the chemical properties of substances, the use of those substances, how certain substances may be purified and extracted. You also look at organic compounds and their structural representations, their bond angles and alkanes and alkenes. Lastly, for the physics section, in Unit 1, you learn about waves, so things like speed and wavelength, as well as the graphical representation of wave features. You understand the difference between transverse waves and longitudinal waves, and also look at things like emission spectra, and the final part of the physics section, you look at waves in communication, so things like fiber optics used in medicine, satellite communications, and Bluetooth as well. For Unit 5, you start off with thermal physics and domestic and industrial applications. So in this section, you'll cover things like power and watts, as well as look at work done. And you'll also look at things like materials and domestic and industrial applications. So things like elasticity, stress, strain, curves, elastic limit, uh, plastic deformation and malleability, amongst lots of other things. And lastly, you look at fluids in motion. So things like viscosity, fluid flow patterns, and some of the principles around this area of study. In terms of the assessment, both are relatively similar. So they both have three exams, which are similar in timing. Unit one exams are 40 minutes each, and unit five are 50 minutes each. The marks awarded are slightly different. In Unit 1, each paper is worth 30 marks, and so the total number of marks is 90. Unit 5 has a total number of 120 marks, with 40 marks in each of the papers. With that said, you probably will be keen to know what the grade boundaries are. So in Unit 1, you need to get a total of 30 marks out of 90 to achieve a pass. To get a merit, you need around 50%, and to get a distinction, you need around 65 marks, or around 70%. The Unit 5 pass grade is around 33 out of 120. The merit is around 54 out of 120 and the distinction is around 75 out of 120. You can see the percentage of the marks you need to get aren't vastly different from each other. One thing I do want to highlight here is that there are a large number of marks between the grade boundaries. So for example, in Unit 1, 30 marks is the pass, but you need an extra 17 marks to get the next grade up. 17 marks is quite a lot of marks, so you do need to work pretty hard to close that gap between a merit and a distinction, or between a pass and a merit. Typically, A-level grade boundaries are around 5 marks. So if we are to compare to A-levels, there is a huge difference. If an A-level student says BTEC is easy, please show them this part of the video to educate them a little bit more. 
I also wanted to give you some guidance on the exam paper. Unit one either has four or five questions per paper, usually four, and unit five usually has five questions per paper. In both units, the final question is always an extended response question. This means the question requires you to write a short essay, and that essay is always worth around six marks. So it's worth preparing for this essay when you revise. It's really hard to predict what the extended response question might be, but it's worth a try to see if you can spot any patterns. Finally, some of you have been asking me about revision and where to start. I actually want to create a whole new video on this eventually, but I thought I'd mention some stuff in here to get you going. I think I've already mentioned these books in my other videos, so BTEC have this revision guide and a revision workbook, and they're fairly good at summarising theory. There's some information in these books that actually doesn't feature in the textbook, so it's worth using both the textbook and these revision guides to help you through your studies. I would also say it's super key to make really good revision notes. They shouldn't be overly long, short bullet points or drawings, maybe even flashcards might help. Each time you have a lesson, you should be spending time that evening reviewing the content and making revision notes. Looking at things regularly helps to commit it to memory a little bit better. Of course, as this is an exam-based unit, you should be practicing some exam questions as well once you've completed the topic. I have some past exam packs on my test shop, so you should go and download these. They're completely free for students and teachers equally, so please go and take advantage of those packs. I'm also always telling students to use the exam mark scheme to revise from. They often contain the best wording that examiners are looking for, so using a mark scheme to make notes for revision is really good practice. The past exam questions I've shared have the mark schemes attached, so if you attempt a question and you get it wrong, you should use the mark scheme to make the corrections and then about 10-15 minutes later, come back to that exact same question and try it again to see if you can recall what the answer is from the mark scheme. I will also add that on my test shop you will find a checklist of all the topics that you need to know for Unit 1 and Unit 5. Please download that document as well because you'll find it really useful when it comes to organising your revision and knowing which topics you need to go back to if you haven't done them in a while. I want to give a shout out to one of my Insta followers who's a first year BTEC student and she's super organised and determined to get the best marks in the course. She went to some effort to make these really pretty revision notes that are on your screen now and she sent them to me on Instagram so that I could feature them in this video. You can see she uses a notepad as well as flashcards for revision. There is a great deal of pleasure that comes from writing really neat notes that look nice to read. The nicer your notes are, the more you'll want to look at them and that makes a huge difference. So thank you to Tracy for sharing these with me and allowing me to feature them in this video. Okay, so that's all I've kind of got for you guys now. I hope that's been helpful and I hope you feel a bit more informed about the units. If you've got any questions, please leave me a comment underneath this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Please also ensure that you've subscribed and you're following me on Instagram so that you can receive updates regularly. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.